Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Sweepstakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello and welcome to Mavs Moneyball After Dark. This is Kirk Henderson and Josh Bow, editors at Mavs Moneyball. You're joining us on Thursday, December 29th, a little after 10 o'clock. The Dallas Mavericks just defeated the Houston Rockets 129 to 114. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, how do you like your fifth place Dallas Mavericks this evening? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's funny. Right before after the Wolves game, the first Wolves game, I, I basically put out a tweet to the effect of the Mavericks are going to be favored in every game they play the rest of the calendar year. It would be really great if they just went on a win streak. Now, before this win streak against under 500 teams, the Mavericks record against under 500 teams was terrible. Like, really, really bad. I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was They're better against, uh, you know, over 500 teams than under 500 teams, which just defies, you know, logical sense. And so, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, even if the team is injured, I think is really is, is really important. I'm not sure how much it teaches us about the team. I think we sort of know who they are. Um, I don't see like a surge in the second half of the year, like we've seen the past two seasons, but that doesn't mean that they can't play, you know, win 53% of their games, you know, the rest of the year. Yeah. And I mean, at least if there's one thing it does teach us is that I think the concerns over this team being a team that maybe organically tanks or you know finds itself somehow outside of the play-in picture or like the 10th seed i think this little winning streak has at least assured us that like hey this team like has its head on straight uh because i mean there was you know some real concerns when you start the season you know 500 in mid-december and luke is playing out of his mind and the team is healthy you know before all these injuries happened all at once they were basically uh clean bill of health for every player on the roster. And Luca was, you know, averaging like 30 and he's averaging like 33 points a game and he looks in shape and they're still, you know, 13 and 13, 15 and 15, you know, 16, you know, they just couldn't get over the hump. And we, the, our big question was, okay, what's going to happen when the injuries occur? Cause if you're, if you're not able to play consistent winning basketball now, it's only going to get harder. But as these Mavericks have proven for three straight seasons, uh, when they get injured or when there's some major roster adversity, that's when they turn their season around. That happened two seasons ago um, with COVID and Luca with a ankle injury. It happened last season with again, COVID Luca ankle injury. And now again, this season, you know, Dorian Finney Smith, Josh Green, Maxi Kleba have all missed multiple games. Maxi's probably out for the season, but of course this is their best stretch of basketball they've played. Like it's just, 
if I were in the locker room, it, I'm not anymore, and I wasn't really there all that much to begin with uh, when I did go. <laughs> right. But, like, if I was, the biggest question I would be asking the players and the coaches right now would be like, why does this keep happening? Not necessarily in like a mean way, but I'm like, teams don't do this, and they don't do it three seasons in a row. Like, yeah, you know, the the way that this team is able to handle adversity with a roster that we all have some question marks about, even when it's 100% is just, it's kind of mind boggling. Like, I just don't know how they do it. Uh, and again, this is, you know, part of me wants to be like, well, this is, you know, the Jace, the benefits of having, you know, Jason Kidd as coach and having a good, a good stable locker room with a coach that guys like, but this happened with Rick too. I mean, this happened two seasons ago with Rick where the team started like eight and 11 and then turned it around in the second half of the season. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's utterly bizarre, but I mean, for for this Mavericks team, it's it's good because it's better to be twenty and sixteen than sixteen and twenty, um, which could have been a very realistic possibility right now when you consider how crucial some of these injured players are. Like, I mean, yeah. it's 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 crazy. I don't I don't right. have an explanation. They're, I and I don't know what else to say about it other than well, like, they're, they're, that's kind of what what I was thinking about in terms of the win streak being almost a bonus instead of a given, because when you miss three rotation players, three of your top six, depending on how you look at, at some of these players, they have some built in excuses. If they were not, you know, if, if they lose to the Spurs, I'm going to be pretty pissed because the Spurs are one of like the Spurs are super tanking. Um, they play three quarters of basketball. Then the fourth, they die. It's, it's kind of incredible. If you go look at some of the, the numbers about them, but you know, if they, if they lose to the Rockets on um, January 2nd or whenever they play them, I'm not going to be super mad because you play in three, the same team three times in 10 days. It's, it's, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. Um, you saw that tonight with Luca and 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 Usman Garuba too. You know, it's the the Mavericks just have with these injuries. You can point to them and say, "Look, they just didn't have the juice." That's what we were expecting when when before they they you know pulled out the Knicks win. Um, just something it, to 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 you know look at it and say, "All right, that, that's okay." You know, it's it's one more thing on the list, but you know, it's, it's a tough season. We're just going to kind of slog through it. Instead, they've, they're now winners of five straight. They're going to you know, most likely be defeat the Spurs. They're going to head into the new year on a, on a really nice win streak, which I think is, is important. And you know, the one guy who we often criticize whenever the Mavs look like shit, I think deserves, you know, we always credit him, but there's something to be said for Luca coming out tonight and just sticking it to the Rockets. He was good early. He was good late. He was good the whole game. He was 35, 12 boards, 13 assists, only two turnovers, two blocks, a steal. Made his free throws, made his three pointers, which, funny enough, doesn't always happen in the same game with, right. with him. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I think I would, I think you might agree with me on this. I, I feel like, not that I, I kind of tweeted this earlier, but I want to talk through it more. Not that, Luca hasn't been spectacular all season. He obviously has, but these last four to five games, I um, mean, the last week or so of games has felt like the attention on him has been a little magnified. And obviously, because he scored fifty uh, against Houston a couple of games ago, and then he had sixty, twenty, and ten. Like obviously, like and and I feel like he knows it. Like in, in watching him tonight, like it just, he kind of it kind of felt like he knew that. Uh, the eyeballs uh, of not only everyone in the arena, but like people watching and maybe league pass and, and writer. Like, I think he just kind of knows that the moment is kind of his right now. Like that he is in the spotlight and he's putting on a show. Um, I mean, I certainly think there's something to that. Like what he yeah. had to say where he, he, he tried to claim after the, the next game that he didn't know what the score was. He knew what the score was. I really wish we I posted that like LeBron lying Right. It was, incre- it was it was great. And you know, like there's a storytelling aspect involved. I love it. I don't care mm-hmm. because it didn't affect anything, but right. you know, and during a long season, you have to find things to play for. And the Mavericks going back to Luca's rookie, you know, I don't know about rookie year, but the, the second year, you know, the, even, you know, as, as things got a little weird before COVID, you know, broke down, broke, broke everything down. They had some pretty un like, inexplicable losses because Luca just sort of loses interest and 
depending on what your point of view is about his game, one of the, the things that a lot of people feel is that if he's going to become an all-time player, what he's going to have to do is find that edge in these sorts of games the way Jordan did, you know, the way Kobe did. And I think he'll get there because he's still a young man. Right. I, I, the expectations that I see from people, and, you know, we're all guilty of this. I am at times. But it's the expectations that people have of him as a 23-year-old man are kind of silly. I just, I, he he's, the fact that he's doing this this year, he, there's some growing pains involved in the maturity levels, but, you know, it it is what it is. Lila, get off, you big knucklehead. I'm not going to be able to edit this out. That's difficult. <laughs> That's all good. And also, like, we were talking, we all joked after the Knicks explosion game, that like, oh, he's 100% not playing against the Rockets. And I kind of forgot that this game was a home game. And now it makes me like, duh he was gonna play like he's it's the encore we we had a couple of you know jack on on our staff guys people were trying to find tickets this was like a weirdly contested ticket because it's december and it's like it's a really crappy team but it's it's the luca effect because he just did something no one's done in nba history and now a bunch of people are like oh i want to go watch that guy play and see what he does this time Uh, and you could definitely feel that in the first quarter that like he kind of knew there was an expectation for him to to ball out because there are a lot of people that bought tickets to that game that might have normally not bought tickets if he didn't do what he did against the Knicks on Tuesday. And I, I think that kind of ties into it a little bit. Yeah. No, I I certainly think that's the case. And how long he keeps this up is going to yeah. be worth paying attention to. I mean, in the last four games, he scored 177 points, which is just <laughs> like – it's 44, 44.3 points a game. What, what? It, this is and, this is preposterous. And what, 42, 39, 47, and 34 minutes. Uh-huh. Uh, man, his minute, man. I know that they're shorthanded to that, but they, that game was, this game has been, this game was pretty much over from like the third quarter on. The fact that yep. he still got oh, well over 30 minutes is kind of a shame, but what are you going to do? Um, yeah. With the injuries now. Well, kid, I mean, kid had to like. I think kid kept him in in this just to sort of put the rockets away, which yeah. they did. Um, because you never know with right. with you know what sort of comeback could happen. So I was pleased with that. You know, the only other thing that I think, and you know, let me know if you think I'm wrong. The only other thing that I found worth taking away from this game was that little. It was the first half. I don't remember when in the first half, but the the Mavericks announced crew sort of beat around the fact why like sort of openly questioning why the Mavericks don't run more. And, you know, tonight they beat the Houston Rockets in fast break points, 25 to three. That's got to be the <laughs> widest. That's got to be the <laughs> widest fast break point margin that they've had this year. And it wouldn't shock me if it's the widest margin that they've had in the Luka Doncic era. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to Cars.com. It's magical. I mean, that's also got to be probably the most fast break points they've had this season, right? 25? 25 uh, is a lot. And that's a lot. They were, you know, you, you can't come out and say it on the air because when you say it out loud, it sounds like blaming the reason in a negative sense. Like, you don't, I mean, the reason is Luca. Luca doesn't run. We all know this. He gets the ball, he sizes up the court, he rarely does advance passes. And frankly, the people that he plays with don't run hard enough or cut to the basket hard enough the way Davis Bertans was doing tonight, the way Dwight Powell, you know, was running ahead of the Rockets. Like the Mavericks don't regularly do that as a team. And those two things sort of like, it it starts to be a self-fulfilling prophecy where it's like, well, we're not going to run because Luca doesn't want to run. And Luca doesn't want to run because we don't run. And it, (laughs) you know, it's, it's, it's a serpent eating its own tail, I guess. And the thing I, I sort of think is, is every now and again, the Mavericks need to put an emphasis on, on pushing just for a surprise i mean it definitely caught the rockets off guard like they're a poorly coached team well i don't know if that's fair to steven silas 
but they're they're just they're just poorly coached. Lila, drop it. Sorry, this puppy is killing me tonight. She is like climbing on all of the furniture in a way I've never seen her do before. <laughs> um, but it, it's watching what Silas and company were not really able to get through to their team. It you just got to take advantage of that. And it, it's on the scouting report that the Mavericks don't run. So I would just love to see them run more. Yeah, the Mavericks entering this game were 29th in transition frequency and 29th in points per possession for transition possessions. So uh, I don't have that advanced data for this game specifically, but 25 points, uh, I mean, that certainly blows away anything that they've been doing. So, so yeah, I mean, that kind of goes to show how bad the, the Rockets are, to be honest. I mean, some of their turnover, I mean, they only had 12 turnovers, but it felt like all of their turnovers were just like fast break starters. Like even if the Mavericks didn't want to run, they had to run because – the the Rockets were losing the ball at like three quarters court. Um, yep. So what else are you going to do? Uh, That's right. For, yeah. And for me, I guess the only other things besides, you know, Luca again, spent, you know, a couple of just kind of quick hitters just about just watching the game again, Spencer Dinwiddie making his shots. Like I just, I, I have to, I, I talked about this after the next game. I have to write about his shooting because I just cannot get over his three point shooting this season. It's just, it is, it is absurd. I just, you just don't really see that in the NBA from guys that have been in the league as long as Spencer has. So I made mean, three or five tonight, 15 points on eight shots. Like he's just another steady game for him. And he's really settled into kind of that secondary off guard role next to Luca. Uh, and then of course, Powell had 19 points and perfect eight of eight shooting. Um, I, I thought it was funny this coming after, I think he tweeted either earlier today or yesterday about Powell, about like how, was he such a positive in that next game where he did, he scored like two points and had zero rebounds. And uh, our main man, Bobby Corrala uh, works with the Mavs uh, kind of gave you a nice little film uh, film reply showing some of the, the nice non box score plays that Powell made in that next game. But so it was kind of nice to see him actually like have fill up the box score in this one. Uh, and I know people get really mad about Powell, like the fact that he has these huge scoring games against bad teams, but like, what are, you, what are you gonna do? Like he's he's not starting now. He played 21 minutes in this game. Like if you if your backup big can get you over the hump against bad teams, like every team in the rotation, every team in the league, something like that, even the good ones. So yeah, like I, people are like getting mad. Like why doesn't Powell do this in the playoffs? And it's like because he makes 11 million dollars a year and he plays 18 minutes a night. Like what are you, what are we talking about? Like All right, I mean, like, let's calm down here. This team is a limited team that is going to continue to frustrate us until they make some sort of change. They're not going to make a change unless it's something that really drastically improves things. And they're going to continue to win just enough to justify the course of action that they've, that they've set. And it's great that Christian Wood is playing really good basketball. They need him. He, you know, finding some sort of of like what do you want to call it consistency has been pretty important for this team but i just don't really have a ton of takeaways other than they need to try to do things differently as a team if they want different outcomes um you know i've i've one one friend that i talk with pretty regularly is just so far out on bullock and i get it i get why but the team's success last year was in in the playoffs was due to Dorian Finney-Smith and Reggie Bullock being able to play 40 minutes a night. They're a very different team this year on that side of the ball. I don't know if they're going to be able to play defense as a team, period. And that's going to, that's really got to just crush kid due to his own sensibilities. But if you want to win games, you got to lean into your strengths at some point. And they've started to do that, but I don't know if it's something that will last because this is a, it's you know they're playing bad teams. Like I'm just I'm 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 struggling to find things to take away from other than this is like really fun to watch. Like winning is fun. Newsflash. <laughs> yeah. And what's really funny about all this is that they immediately like after this really cupcake part of their schedule, um, they play Boston and New Orleans, and that could be back to back games against the against each con- conference leader. If the, it's just like walking into the ocean. Like, it's just not. <laughs> so, that'll be a good measuring stick. That'll be like, yeah. okay, you just put on, you know, 
I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Seven game, you know, they're going to presumably be on a seven game winning streak uh, on January 5th against Boston. Like, that's going to be a litmus test. Like, hey, where are you guys? Have you guys found something? Or was that, was this a little bit of fool's gold? Or maybe more some likely answer is probably something in between. But at least, you know, like I said, like you said, winning is better than losing. Even if we don't learn much, at least for me, I've learned that the Mavericks. I uh, can't officially start their season until the entire fan base has pulled their hair out and half the team. Oh yeah, like, I guess that's just well. Those two works. games, I don't it's, know. Like it's, it's funny. Those two games you just mentioned, the Boston New Orleans one, remind me of a stretch that I was paying attention to last year, and I remember this because it was right around my son's birthday party, where they headed out on the road for this five game. Uh, it was a six game, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five-game road road trip where they started off with Houston, but then they played Boston, Brooklyn, Philly, oh, Charlotte. Right. And I remember as you and I podcasting about this, and we're just basically like, look, if they win two of this stretch, we're going to be psyched. And then they went to Houston. They won because Houston was terrible. They beat Boston in a shocker. They beat Brooklyn in a shocker. And at that point, that was when I really started to feel like the Mavericks had something special going. Because right. what's particularly crazy about that is I'm looking at this portion of the schedule and the Mavericks only lost back-to-back games after January 1st twice. Yeah, they won. They were a 60-win team in 20th, mm-hmm. from January 1st to the end of the season for the most part. So the measuring stick element that you just mentioned I think is is important because if you could play – like. I know we probably all sort of have disdain for the Pelicans just because the Mavericks always play them well, but Luca and, and, and um, Zion haven't actually played more than one time. So it's, it's, I don't, I don't know if anyone's it, noticed, but Zion is, he is powering up super Saiyan mode the mm-hmm. last couple of games. So yeah. that'll be fun. I hope he's healthy. Oh yeah. Um, and well, then man, right after that Boston New Orleans game, they play five game road trip. Portland twice, Clippers. So yeah, they're not gonna. I know they're not gonna have an easy. Like There's just this, no was, thing. this was this was the easy part the easy of the schedule. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it'll be fun, but that's fun. Like I, I, I can't wait for the good game, like the games against Boston and New Orleans. Like because yeah, like we've those. watched this team for three years and the rosters kind of stayed similar. Like these are the games that you know can tell us you know what's different about this team, if anything. So like I agree said, with that. Yeah. So. Glad that they're stacking well, wins, and we'll see how it is in the new year. This is fun. All right, so the <laughs> next time the Mavericks play is New Year's Eve. They play 6 o'clock against the Spurs. I'm going to write that one because I don't have a life. Um, <laughs> we'll see if we do a podcast together. I bet right. we will. Yeah. But maybe we'll be like 10 minutes of, of hopefully that because like greg popovich already said you know our our plan to contain luca is to is to hold him under 50 is what yeah. greg popovich <laughs> said tonight so um yeah we'll be back to cover that one but maybe not our best work but you know nobody reads the site around that time anyways thank you guys for hanging out with us um and we will talk to you on saturday everybody have a good rest of your week